No video on working with tabular data would be complete without discussing how to join, union and reshape your tables. PySpark supports all these joins you know from SQL and it's fairly easy to use. And for this example I've created some example CSV files in our workspace. So let's have a look at those. So if we run ls, you're going to see that we have a new folder called office in our workspace and if we go into that folder and list the available files in there, you will see that we have multiple data sets in there. So let's go into that folder and run ls again. And here we have three files. One is called employees.csv, holding information on the employees in our office. Another one is called salaries.csv, which holds information on past salary payments for our employees. And jobs.csv holds information on jobs that exist in our company. Let's read all of those into Spark data frames. So first we're gonna read in the employees table. So we're gonna say, first of all, we gotta go into an interactive Spark session and my Spark cluster is currently running. So I'm gonna say PySpark and master is, I always forget the URL. So that's the URL for our Spark cluster. Put that in there. Great, we are now connected to our Spark cluster and are in an interactive shell. So I'm gonna read in the employees data set. I'm gonna say spark.read dot format csv because it's a csv file we're gonna set some options and we do that by saying options and separator is equal to a comma the header is true because we do have a header and i want to infer the schema and it is located on the local file system in home spark office employees.csv. Um, maybe you just noticed that the way I set the options deviates from what we've done earlier. Earlier we set every single option by running the option met method for every single option we want to set. But this time we set the options in a single method call right over there. And here you can see that you can achieve the same goal with different syntax. And this is something you will notice many times in PySpark actually. So let's see how that data looks like. So let's run employees.show. And here we can see um, our data frame with a name, age, and job column. This is very basic data and by itself it's not that useful. So let's see what the other data sources have to offer. So we're going to read in the salaries data frame by saying salaries is equal to spark.read.format csv basically the same so the options are gonna be separ separator is a comma the header is true and we want to infer the schema and it is located on our local file system in home spark office and salaries.csv So let's have a look at the salaries. I should write it correctly, salaries.show. There you are. Um, you will notice that this is not a simple mapping of employees to how much they make. Um, this is a time series. Um, hence, we have multiple entries for a single employee. If we want to know how much a given employee makes, well, we need to aggregate some data. So let's have a look at the third data set, jobs. And this will be jobs is spark.read.format csv. Set some options here. So options is separator is a comma. The header is true. And we want to infer the schema. And we're gonna load it from the local file system again in home, spark, office, and then jobs.csv. I'm gonna show that data frame. For every single job we have, we get some additional information, such as the department they belong to and the type of job it is. Now let's start by simply adding the job information to the employees. And we can do that by running a simple left join. 
Uh, running a simple left join simply takes a left and right data frame and just adds information that is in the right data frame, which corresponds to data in the left data frame. And the common denominator in both tables is the job column. So we know the job of every employee, hence we can add information that is associated with that job. And here's the code to do that. So we're gonna say employees is equal to employees dot join. And we're gonna join the job state frame on the column job. And we are running a left join. And that's it, and that was pretty easy, wasn't it? So what, what exactly did we do? So first of all, we want to override the employee's data frame, and remember that we want to add information to it. Um, hence, we're gonna use a um, method on this data frame. So we're gonna say employees.join, that's the method to use. And the, the join method can actually run all the different uh, flavors of joins. And the first argument is the right data frame that, that holds the informa information that you want to join to the left data frame. The second argument is the name of the column you want to join on. And notice that you could easily use multiple columns for that. If so, you just have to give them a, a list of column names. And the last argument is the name of the type of join you want to run. In this case, we want to run a left join, which adds information that is in the right table to the left table. So let's look at the results. So we're going to say employees.show. Okay, we now have more information available for every employee. We now know in which department they work and what kind of job it is that they are doing. Now, what about the salary data frame? We're going to do two things here. The first thing we're going to do is add the department to the salary table. After doing that, we're going to sum all the salaries per department per date. This way, we know how much salaries they actually run up. Let's start by adding the department via a left join. So notice that I don't care about the other columns, so we'll run a select statement before joining. So we're gonna say salaries, and we're gonna overwrite it. So we're gonna say salaries.join. We're gonna join the employee state of frame, but first we're gonna select some columns in it. So employee and department because I don't care about the other columns. The common denominator is the employee column, and we want to run a left join on it. So let's have a look at it. This looks good. And next we're gonna run our aggregation. So we're gonna say salaries underscore department is salaries, but we're gonna group this data set, a uh, data frame by date and department. And then we're gonna aggregate this data frame by calculating the sum on the salary column. So let's have a look at it. Actually, let's sort this data data frame as well by department and date. Yeah, this looks good. Um, next, we want to add the employee's salary to the employee's data frame. Now, how do we do that? Let's get the most recent salary payment for every employee and add that value to the employee's data frame. So we're gonna run salary recent is equal to salaries grouped by employee, employee, and then we're gonna aggregate some data because for every employee, we wanna get the most recent date. So salary recent, how does this look now? So for every single employee, we know what's the most recent date of salary payment. Okay, next we're gonna join this information to the salaries data frame and we're gonna overwrite salary recent. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the salary data frame, we're gonna join this salary recent data frame to it because this is just temporary data. We're gonna join on the employee column, we're gonna run a left join. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna filter and we're gonna say, oh, I see, I need to run a, 
I need to run an import first because what we're going to need is we're going to need the functions. So let's do this again. So salary recent is equal to salaries. We're going to join salary recent to it. Employee. We're going to do a left join. We're going to run a filter afterwards, which says, well, the date column must be equal to the max date column. So let's have a look at this. So that's how this looks like. And then we're going to say employees is employees. We're going to join to it the salary recent data frame but we are only interested in the employee and the salary and we're going to join on employee and it's going to be a left join and let's have a look at the result yep that worked so this was a bit more than just a simple line of code. Now, what exactly did I do? Well, first I created the data frame that holds the maximum date for every employee. So basically the date uh, when the last um, a salary payment was made. Afterwards, I joined that to the salary data frame and kept only the dates that are the most recent one. So I basically said in the salaries data frame, I'm only interested in the most recent salary payment for every employee. Then I joined that data to the employees table. So then I know, okay, what was the amount of the, of the most recent salary payment? And if we take a look at the result, we see that it did just what we wanted. Now you will notice that for some employees, we are missing the salary payment, right? Because it says null. That is because for not for every uh, employee, we had a corresponding match in the salaries, pay, uh, salaries data frame. So we only had salary payments for these four. So this would be something we would need to address in a, a production-like environment, of course. So um, it, it, you could run in a situation where the right table does not provide all the information you need. But technically, it did exactly what we wanted it to do. Of course, you could also use all the other join types you know, like full join, um, for example. But I'm going to stick with the with the left join for now. So let's have a look at running a union. And if you have two data frames um, with the same columns, you can run union to concatenate both of them. Notice, however, that they must have the same columns and they must be in the same order. This might not seem obvious, but if your columns are in different order, you will get weird results. So let's create um, a few example data frames. So let's say is create some made up data here. So B is also is this and D is this. I'm gonna create spark data frames from them. And this code might look a bit weird, but it creates two dummy data frames. Both are holding two rows with a string and a number column. Now we want to create a third data frame which just concatenates both data frames. So first I'm gonna show you how those data frames look like. So exactly as intended, we have two rows and two columns, a string and a number column. Now we want to concatenate both data frames and it's totally easy to do. You're just gonna say A and use a method call which is called union and then the data frame you want to union. Now let's have a look at the result. 
and there it is. So that was pretty easy. Um, you just take your first data frame and add the union method call to it. It takes one argument, which is the data frame um, you would like to concatenate to it. Of course, this is not limited to just two data frames. You could um, pipe all these data frames that you want to concatenate into a single line and you would get one large data frame. Now we have joint and unit. So the last thing we want to do is reshaping. Um, if you've used pandas in the past, you might be familiar with pivot and melt. If you've used R, you might be familiar with pivot wide and pivot long. And what are the equivalents in PySpark? Well, the equivalent of pivot in pandas is, well, pivot in PySpark. And if you're looking for a melt equivalent, you will be out of luck, at least to my knowledge. And if you Google it, you will come across people posting their user-defined functions. However, there does not seem to be a melt equivalent in PySpark. Now, if I'm wrong, please let me know and please correct me, but I haven't seen it. Now let's take the salary data and bring it into white format. We want to have a row for every employee and the single month should be in their own columns. Now in real life, I wouldn't put data in that format since it does not adhere to the tidy data principles, but we're going to do it for demonstration purposes. So let's clear the screen and let's do this. So we're going to say salaries. So let's maybe have another look at how that data looks like right now. So this is how the data looks like right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to say salaries underscore pivot is salaries, salaries group by group by employee. And we're going to pivot by date. And we're going to sum up the salary column. I'm gonna fill the missing values with O's, and that's it. So let's have a look at the data. All right, that worked. Um, but why did it work? Well, first we take our data frame and group by the variables that we wanna keep as indexes. In our case, we want to have the employees as an index. So our single employees, this is the index we want to use. Of course, we could include multiple variables here. Next, we use the pivot method. This will indicate the variable which currently holds the variable names in the long format. So for every distinct value in that column, we want to get a column in the white data frame. But what should be the values for those columns. Well, we need to define how to compute those values first. This is done by running an aggregation, hence the sum operation on the salary column. Um, why do we have to do this? Um, it is because it could be that the index variables and the pivot value are not distinct. So in our example, this would mean that we have two salary transactions for a single employee for a given date, and this might be a bonus payment. And in that case, we need to aggregate it somehow. And in the end, we just fill the missing values with uh, zeros. Um, and we do that since missing values basically equals zero in our context. And that covers the most basics of joining, unioning, and reshaping your data.